Hey guys, welcome to another episode of El Jefe's Chop Shop. And this week we're going to be doing some shed mods. I'm going to be building some shelves. So I spoke last week about getting some uh, shelves from my neighbour. So that was really good of him. I just had to buy some angle iron. So I've done that. I've bought... Uh, as much as they had, which was 20, 20 lengths of 2 metres, and then the offcuts of 1 metre, so it's 5 I think. So I'm 1 length short, which is 4 uh, angle lines, which is then 4 corners of a shelf. So I should be able to build all of the shelves except for one. Uh, I got the welder and the extension cords and stuff in my car, I was helping Dad out the other day. So I'll pull all this out, put it all in the backyard, and start mocking up these shelves and see what we can make happen. So this is the first set of shelves laid out. So one at the top and one at the bottom. So I'm going to get these two tacked in and then mark out and evenly space the other uh, five, I think, shelves. And then once they're all tacked in, I'll put the other two corners on, tack those in, make sure everything's square, give it about an inch of weld on each corner. That should be plenty. So you need to do this like five times over for the little shelves and two for the bigger shelves. So if you missed last week's episode, this is what I've got to work with. So we've got seven shelves for each of the smaller ones and five I think or four for the bigger ones so we'll evenly space everything out and make it as usable as possible. set of shelves tacked together so as you can see they're quite tall but that's what you want in the shed so I've decided to space them as written there so the first gap is 500 300 300 300 300 and then a little bit less than because the top shelf is in there so just tack these together now I need to fully weld it and there's a few things I've learned already which I'll correct on the next one is if you look here there's actually quite a bit of a gap. Well, here's a better one. There's a bit of a gap there. Whereas on the other side, there's no gaps. So I just need to take note of where I put those gaps because I don't want the shelves to be any wider than 900. But if they're a little bit deeper, that's okay. So I just got to keep that in mind. And mock up the rest of them. So I'll just weld this one fully, move it out of the way, and then just get on with the time lapse. <laughs> So last weekend Emily and I got the Lexus out, cleaned it, her car's always out so we cleaned both of them and then someone came to look at this and didn't buy it, so that was helpful and then someone came to look at the Commodore and didn't buy it, so that's helpful and the Swift is gone, so that's good, so that sold last night and then I bought another car, which is over there so I need to get this out because someone's coming to look at it in a minute but it's currently bogged because uh, it's been raining flat out and I tried to move it last night and I got about two foot or three foot maybe and it just bogged itself and would just spin so I'm going to try and move that now and see how we go so Emily gave the van a push and we tracked a whole bunch of mud out whoops And I also used a surf bonnet that a mate gave me for a bit of traction. Uh. Bye mate! So the front yard's looking pretty bare. Last night I sold the VN Commodore and I also sold the i30. And then this is the Hilux that I picked up. So it's a 2009 single cab. It's a long tub. As far as I can tell this is the only one I can find, so I don't know. 
if they're all long tubs or if this is a special thing. But anyway, uh, it's got 147,000 Ks on it. It's got the 2TR 2.7 petrol in it and it's manual. So it was a business car, um, just like the site car, so it's got low Ks. Uh, but, you know, people treat work cars a bit poorly, so we'll see. But it's got no tow bar, which is good because it hasn't had a hard life. But I need a tow bar, so I'm going to order one of those pretty soon. But it's pretty good. Needs a set of tyres at some point, reasonably soon. Other than that, there's a few dings and scratches, but it's perfect for what I want. So this is the new daily. This is the 2TR. Which is the big brother of the 3RZ, which is a good motor, so I can only assume that this is going to be a good motor. Pretty wrapped, drives super smooth, and it's a lot softer suspension than I thought it was going to be. Um, I figured the rear would be pretty hard, but it's not bad at all. So, new daily. Woohoo! So it does have the remnants of a sticker on the uh, bonnet, but that's alright, I'll get that buffed out. And the rest of it's pretty good, just the bonnet's a bit hazy, so just polish that and that's all I'm going to bother with on the outside, I think. As for the inside, seats are pretty clean, there's a little tiny rip just here and everything else is pretty good. So like sort of bunched up where you get in, but other than that, it's really good. Steering wheel's polished from people's hands and the gear knob's polished and almost missing the writing on the top. Uh, the floor mats are pretty knackered, but other than that, it's really good. It's just a bit filthy. I haven't cleaned it yet. I wouldn't mind a different radio as well. I don't normally use the radio, but this one annoys me. So, might get a different radio, and that's about it, really. Pretty happy with it. So I just ordered a tow bar for the Hilux. It's going to be 360 bucks, and I'm going to pick it up tomorrow afternoon. So next video may be me putting a tow bar on this thing. So this is the last car to sell. Uh, it's the last running one I've got anyway at the moment. Um, so if you want an IS300, I've been asking 8 grand, now taking 6 because I've got a good deal on the Hilux. So I want to try and sell this and pay for that and get some money back in my pocket. So 6 grand, no lower. As for the rest of the yard, I've still got the K55, the Sior, the other Sior and the K20. So the two Siors are going to become one car and then disappear down the road. And then the K20, I'm probably going to sell it now because I'm not going to have the time to finish this thing. I want to try and get my stuff done. And then the 55, I'm going to get that running soon and get it back on the road. So soon, as in fix Emily's car and get the shed ready and then I'll get onto that and then might do these ones. So as you can see, the crown's been kicked out of the shed again. It's because I've been building those shelves. So I built two and then it's been raining flat out this week. Can't really tell. It's pretty muddy out there. I got bogged in my front driveway, so that kind of explains how muddy it is. So I've only got two shelves made, so these ones were here before. Got the crown parts up out of the way, and they're the two shelves that I've made. So one's almost full of tools and stuff, the other one's pretty empty. So the plan is to add the other two smaller sections here, and the two bigger sections there. And then these uh, louver plastic tub holders will go on the back wall. So we'll get to that soon. It's just a matter of trying to get the, the shelves made in the weather that's going on at the moment. It's a bit horrible. As for Emily's car, I gave Navi the intercooler and the water feed the other day. So he's welded that up and he's given it back to me. So I'll show you those in a minute. I uh, just need a few different more pipes to make an exhaust and get the plumbing all done. So slowly chipping away at this, but I've been flat out at work. So haven't had a whole lot of time to work on the seal. Um, and I also need to get some bends for the intercooler piping and stuff like that and everywhere's shut so I'll get to it when I can and this is the main project at the moment it's just taken a bit longer than we thought because you can't get many of the parts but stay tuned this will be this will be a thing soon as for the 30k challenge parts I've got two sets of seats a bunch of steering wheels and stuff and we are really selling it uh, slowly we're not really throwing it out the door but Definitely cutting it down pretty quickly. So we've got another set of doors off the crawlers and a bunch of wheels with the pantry door under it because that got wet and buckled. So now I'm trying to flatten it out. And we've got a bit more plastic stuff over here. A few things are going in the bin, just been sort of organizing, but everything's soaked. So it's a bit of a pain. And I also heard back about the shed from the council. So what's marked out at the moment is a 16 by nine meter section. 
Uh, so that's this corner to the back corner. It's 16 by 9. So what I can build is a 8 by 15. So it's an 8 by 12 with a 3 meter veranda on the end. But the, what the council has said is it has to come over this way. So the majority of the shed is behind this person's shed. Um, so it's out here somewhere. So what I'm going to have to do is needs to be a meter at least off of the fence and the council said two meters would be really nice uh, for the angle because the shed's going to be quite tall and um, like the sunlight angle into their backyard um, they don't want my shed to overpower their backyard so I said if it's going to be two meters I may as well make it three so it's going to be three meters off the fence so I can get the trailer down there or a garden shed or a rainwater tank or whatever which is quite a long way um, and then it's going to be over here so the end corner this corner here will end up being like right out here somewhere which then makes the shed wall sort of here-ish instead of where it is over there so it ends up being pretty big and then because I need to shuffle it to the left it ends up being a four meter gap at that end so there's four meters from the fence to the end of the shed and then there's three meters of pergola and then the shed so it ends up kind of being in the middle of the backyard but if that's what I have to do to get the shed that's what we're doing so I just need to get 100% confirmation from them and then I'll start building it and getting all everything organized So hopefully in the next two months or so we'll have a shed Probably won't have concrete for a couple of months, but hopefully we'll get the shed up So here's the stuff that I got Navi to modify for me So this bend here used to be on this side and was facing that way So now it goes this way, which is great He welded up a few of the little holes and the tabs and stuff and gave me another mounting bracket So now I can mount something on this side and then this side I've just used the original two and left the original uh, outlet as well. But he also had to weld a big old plate on the end for me. So looks really good. Thank you Navi, you and Lifesaver. So next job on the Sior is to mount this. So that'll be in the next couple of weeks. And then I also got him to modify the water feed and return. So he's just put some AN fittings on there for me. So I can go AN to barb and then to hose. So this sits on the turbo like that, then this one here goes underneath the engine and this one here is going to have to go through the engine mount and pretty much turn around and go back. So you'll see that in another episode anyway. Emily broke a bowl this morning, she was very disappointed. So as for the sim rig, uh, I've taken the buttons out. So this is the section that used to go behind the steering wheel. Um, it's got the circuit board and the little switches for the paddles. So I need to pull one of these off and make it into a handbrake. And I couldn't get the steering wheel to mount upside down and swap this around because I want this was up the wrong way. I wanted to disconnect it and put it back on the other way. Couldn't get that to happen. So I'm going to end up remote mounting this, which is also good because it's not behind the steering wheel. So I haven't done anything more with the sim rig yet. Um, I've added the power box for the seats. I'm going to put a cup holder here somewhere and probably try and mount this like that so you can get to it pretty easily. Um, and then one of these switches is going to become the handbrake. So it's all coming along. Um, I've mounted this upside down and I've put the steering wheel back on upside down. So it's now up the correct way, if that makes sense. So all I need to do now is just rewire this, make the uh, wire that goes to this thing a bit longer and mount that somewhere. And then cut and weld and paint everything else. And then it'll be done. So that's the update for today. So like I said in the last clip, I just sold the i30 and the Swift. So I got 2400 for the Swift which gives me a profit of $500. Uh, I got offered $2,600 for it ages ago, um, but with all this coronavirus stuff that's going on, nothing's really selling, so I've had to take a bit of a loss on it, but I still made $500. I uh, sold a bunch of K20 bits to my friend Mel, and I sold the i30 for eight grand, which is pretty cheap, but also I doubled my money. So the 30K challenge is now up to $12,925.50. So now I can buy something good with a you know, big chunk of money and try and get a good return on it. So, almost halfway. Pretty exciting. So, thanks for watching, guys. I know this episode was a bit all over the place. Uh, I've been doing a whole bunch of different stuff this week and with work and trying to fit in what I can when I can, it's been a bit difficult. So, thanks for sticking in. Thanks for watching. See you next week.